Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Anita Eliason, and I'm a business advisor with the Massachusetts Small Business Development Center in Springfield. So we thank you for joining us for our program today. And I'm just going to share my screen um, just so we can see what's coming up as well. So are you all seeing that? Thumbs up? Good. Okay. So today we are doing LinkedIn. And then so this is just the next couple coming up. And our classes are mostly on Mondays and Thursdays, unless there's a holiday. So today, LinkedIn, Thursday is Pinterest. And then next Tuesday, because of the holiday, we'll go to Twitter. And, um, and then past that, we've got classes twice a week until around the second week in November. So we invite you to join for any of those, any or all of them. And these classes are brought to you as a collaboration of all of the business advisory services in Western Massachusetts, including SCORE, the Valley Community Development, the Center for Women and Enterprise, Common Capital, and the Franklin County CDC. And many of us are sponsored by MGCC and the Small Business Administration. Our offices for the MSBDC are throughout the state and also includes an, an professional advice for procurement technical assistance and also for exporting. We're going to be asking you a question. We are grant funded and so we are going to be asking you an income verification. If you kindly fill this out for us, we'd appreciate it. It's completely anonymous. We have no idea who answered what question. It's just to keep track of our metrics. So if you could please find the area that you live in. So we have city and county down the left side and Hampshire and Hamden counties are considered the metro area and also the number of persons in your household and find where your income is relative to that number. Okay. So if your income equals is equal or less than the amount shown, then the answer is yes. And if your income is greater, the answer is no. So I'll show you again. So if you'll find your, the number here, and if your income is less than the answer is yes, and if it's more than, the answer is no. So let me just do this, launch this poll. And again, this is anonymous. Thank you all for filling this out. This is great information. That's great. So we have 75% of the people that answered. Terrific. Thank you so much. <clears throat> I'll just go back to here. Okay. Don't need the results. And so today, I'd like to introduce to you our co-presenters. We have Samantha Prevere, who's the Digital Marketing and Program Specialist for the Center for Women and Enterprise, and Caitlin Suica, who's Marketing, Public Relations, and Communications for Avidia Bank. So thank you so much for joining us. And give us the rules in terms of questions and answers. We'll be monitoring chat. Can we just kind of interrupt when we have questions? How shall we do this? So, Kate, I don't know how you feel, but I think this is going to be a very informal presentation in that we're going to walk you through. So if you have questions, especially while we're on something, I'm comfortable okay. if folks want to throw that in the chat. And then if you want to let us know if questions pop up, I think it can work really that well that way. Agreed. Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. So I'll go ahead and share the screen. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started. Well, welcome everyone. Um, so today, as we said, uh, so I'm Sam Pavir. I do the digital marketing and program management here at CWE. Um, we're based out of Westboro, but we cover all of Central Mass and we're definitely starting to extend more into Western Mass. Um, and especially right now, as we're working remote, we can kind of connect with anyone. So definitely, if you have questions afterwards, definitely feel free to reach out. Um, and then 
Caitlin has actually been working with CWE long before I was even on board. Um, so I'll let her kind of give her spiel and who she is. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so I'm Caitlin Suica, and I am the communications manager at Avidia Bank, which encompasses all kinds of things. Um, it's our PR, social media, digital marketing, content production. Um, and Avidia is a community bank based in Metro West and Central Massachusetts. Uh, I've been there for just about six years now, and I've been uh, doing a lot of classes and so forth and teaching things like this with CWE for almost five years. Uh, so I'm really excited to be here and glad you all could join us. So we'll go ahead and get into it. So this is what our agenda looks like today. So initially, we just want to kind of go over some of like LinkedIn best practices. What should you do? What should you maybe not do? Um, and then we'll walk through a LinkedIn personal page versus a LinkedIn business page because those do look very different. Um, and then hopefully we'll have time and we can walk through what a LinkedIn group looks like because those can be super helpful. Um, and I have Q&A at the end, but definitely if you have questions while we're going through, feel free to throw them in the chat and we'll be happy to answer them as they come up. Uh, so we'll go ahead and jump in. So the first one, what should you do? Definitely make sure you have a professional headshot. I don't know how many times I have gotten a request from someone and there's no like headshot. I don't even know who this person is. And I'm like, is this a real account or is it spam? And I'm like, I'm just not gonna accept it. So make sure you have a photo there because you don't want that to be the reason that you don't get the connection that you were hoping to get. Um, and then also on LinkedIn, you can have a cover photo. So we'll kind of walk through what that looks like when we do the tutorial. Um, but make sure it's something relevant to your industry or just like a nice cover photo that fits the space really well. Um, you don't want it all pixelated or anything like that. Um, let's see. Keeping your information up to date, definitely. So whether that's your photo, we don't want it from like 10, 20 years ago. We want to know what you look like now. Um, make sure you have your current place of work. If you've gotten any awards, you want to highlight that on there. Um, yeah. Do you want to? <laughs> oh, would you like me to take the next year? <laughs> sure. Sure. Um, obviously, for some dues on LinkedIn, one of the big reasons people leverage it is to connect with people who are relevant in your industry. So, you know, while it might be great to reach out to former classmates or some people that you know um, in the community, make sure you're looking for those industry people so that you can connect and get get that um, conversation going with the relevant people. Um, requesting recommendations to be published on your page. So this is a great way if you're looking for someone to recommend you for work, um, recommend you know their experience, it's a review. Um, it's a great way to also gather referrals too. So um, definitely send those requests out. And if somebody uh, does uh, give you a nice recommendation on your page, make sure that you also recommend them back. It's just a nice courtesy um, to also do that as well. And then one of the things that I stress often is to make sure you're doing an annual audit of your LinkedIn profile every year. So uh, take a look through, see if anything's changed. Sometimes we have title changes. Sometimes we've changed how our company's being positioned. Maybe we want to update our photo because it's 10 years old. Uh, so, you know, take, take a look every single year and just make sure that things are up to date uh, on your LinkedIn profile. And then as far as some of the don'ts, so if you, and LinkedIn is pretty good where it will prompt you to fill out each section, but make sure you like spend some time and really work through it. Um, I know at first it can kind of feel overwhelming, like there's so many pieces, but just take it one step at a time and we'll walk through like what are each section, what should you be filling out, um, but make sure you have all those key pieces where you have your photo, you have your work title, like who are you, what do you do, um, and then give them a summary of like, here's what I do. Um, and then my own, this is my own personal pet peeve, and I'm sure it's a lot of other people, but if you've been on LinkedIn, so LinkedIn, it's a professional networking site. Um, so you want to keep it professional. Sometimes you'll get rants from people that are either political in nature. Um, and especially if you're marketing your own business or just looking for new job opportunities, that may be something you might not want to put on LinkedIn, but maybe put it over on your Facebook page for your friends to see. Um, but that's kind of something that I warn people of like, is this something you would want your colleagues to see? And if it's not, maybe <laughs> 
pause. Um, and then just any, because it is professional and you want to connect with maybe other companies, other colleagues, you don't want hat. You don't want to have any typos or bad grammar on there. Um, so just double, triple check before you hit post. Um, and then Kate, I'll let you take the last one. Sure. Um, and then, you know, don't use LinkedIn for cold calling. You know, if, if you're in the business to do those cold calls, you know, leave it to the phone. Uh, I can't tell you how many times that I've had, uh, I connect with somebody and I'm like, oh, great. This looks like a great connection. And literally the instant I connect with them, I'm like, do you have five minutes to hop on a call so you can learn how to make your marketing better? And I'm like, okay, I don't want it to connect with you anymore. Right. It's just total turn off. So social media is meant to be social. There's meant to be conversations to be had. It's not meant to just quick cold call people in that sense. So I definitely deter people from staying away from that. And especially because if you're connecting with somebody and you follow up with that, somebody could flag your profile and then you would be prohibited from using certain aspects of LinkedIn. So just be very cautious over that. It's kind of like violating the do not call registry. Um, you can do the same thing within LinkedIn by doing too much of that kind of cold connecting. And we had a question about um, professional photography. Do you need that both for the business LinkedIn and personal? Or do you think you can get away with a candid shot for your personal LinkedIn? What do you think? We might, I mean, I'll be interested in Kate's perspective too, but I think for me, um, I don't care if you have a professional photographer that's taking your photo. I think it's just more so like the selfies sometimes that don't give off the professional vibe that you're looking to promote on LinkedIn. Um, so it's not to say that you can't get a really great headshot from like someone taking a photo, even on iPhones, like now, like yeah. the camera's on there are really good. Um, but that's just, I don't know if Kate, you have a different insight. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't think you necessarily have to pay to have a professional photographer to take your picture. Um, just as long as it's a, it's a good picture, it has your face very clearly shown. Um, that's really important up to date. So I mentioned, you know, having a picture that's, that's relevant um, within the last few years. So you're recognizable to people. Um, and I would definitely leave like things that might be hobbies out of it, unless your job is part of your hobby. So like, if you have a hunting photo, maybe not use your hunting photo for your business on LinkedIn. Um, that'd be more, unless you own a hunting company, then that would make sense. Um, or like, you know, a picture of you sitting with a glass of wine, unless you're a sommelier, maybe not use that on LinkedIn. Um, and these are all instances I've seen. So just a little pro tip there. And for business, um, you know, we'll go over the business page in a little bit, but I think what's important is probably going to be most likely your logo um, and your branding. And I'll show you some examples. Okay. And I have a couple of other questions as well. So would you suggest if you're looking for potential customers, right, would you suggest then Facebook rather than LinkedIn? Or would you just suggest starting out with a social engagement on either one and then seeing if it turns into more of a potential for business? Mm. I feel like I want to know more <laughs> like yeah. okay. what, what is your bit? Cause I think depending on your business, maybe LinkedIn is the right place to market it sometimes. Okay. Um, but Facebook, maybe depending on that industry that can make more sense. So um, yeah. Okay. I agree. And I have another question. What if you want to emphasize a new business that you want to start and that your current job skills aren't relevant to that? How do you handle that in terms of, listing your job skills if they're not related to what you're talking about? Um, yeah, so I would say um, there's a couple things on LinkedIn that you can do. So the first is um, as you start to build up towards that business and build that portfolio of some of your work that you've done, um, mm -hmm. you know, add in those keywords, share those projects that you've worked on, even if they're a side project or something like that on LinkedIn. So that way it gains some credibility. Um, LinkedIn also has various assessments you can take. So let's say you wanted to um, open a, a business for writing, for example, right? You wanted to become a freelance writer. You can take some various assessments and showcase that on LinkedIn. And one of the things that we also mentioned earlier was about um, getting recommendations. So you can actually send a message and say, hey, you know, hey, Sam, I'd like you to write me a recommendation for speaking on these different webinars. Could you write that up for me? And I'm, I'm directing her to what I kind of want her to say. Um, and knowing that she'll write me a recommendation, but then that helps too in building that credibility. Mm -hmm. Okay. And 
we have a, a client here who is, has a drop shipping business. So the question is, is LinkedIn good for a drop shipping business? Which leads to the bigger question, are there certain types of businesses for which LinkedIn is better, you know, better situated? Um, I mean, if you're looking for, especially for B2B, I think LinkedIn is really good. Um, so that might be really beneficial. Um, okay. B2C is probably more so for Facebook, but also a little bit on LinkedIn, depending on your approach. Okay. And can you differentiate, just describe B2B versus B2C? Sure. Just for um, so business to business. So if you're offering services to a business, so for example, um, you work at a marketing agency, you're, you're working to do marketing for other businesses versus offering something like a tangible product that like a, from a retail store that a consumer might be purchasing. Um, so that's usually the difference there. Gotcha. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we'll go ahead. Um, so I think we just wanted to kind of like set the stage before we dive in, but now we'll go ahead and I'll stop sharing and do a new share. Let's see. All right, so you should be able to see my screen now. Mm -hmm. um, so this is what a personal LinkedIn page looks like. So this is my own. Um, so you'll see I have my headshot here. This background here is just your cover photo. So for me, because I typically do like social media, I'm on the computer, I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna do a keyboard. <laughs> and then I left it at that. Um, and then I have my full name. And then, so under here, typically whenever you create your page, it'll automatically put in whatever your most recent title and company that you worked with is. So that's why you, especially you want to make sure that that's updated. Um, so, but you are able to go in and edit it. So for me, I have digital marketing and program manager, um, just because I think the title is important to know, like, what, what do I do? Um, but then you can also frame it by using, like Kate was talking about, the different um, like keywords for your industry. So to help my um, profile show up better on LinkedIn, I have just a brief description of like what it is that I do. So helping small business owners leverage small <laughs> leverage social media to boost their business. So I have that small business keyword in there, social media, which is the other key piece that I did. Um, but you can choose, uh, up to 120 characters to put in this section. I don't think that necessarily means that you need to use all 120 and definitely don't try. I've seen people try and put too many keywords and then it just like looks like word vomit. Um, so something succinct that gets to the root of like what it is that you do. Um, you can see, you can put in your location. For me, I have it as Westboro. You could do even wider. Like you'll see a lot of people around us who do greater Boston area, um, which makes a lot of sense. I just left mine as Westboro. <laughs> um, and then you can see how many connections. The next se section is your about you section. Um, so in here, I think what's the most important is for people to know who you are, like what you're passionate about, what it is that you do. Um, and as opposed to your resume, this can be a lot more fun and engaging and less formal. So I think take advantage of that too. Um, but then at the end, just making sure people know, like, what is it that you are looking to get out of LinkedIn? Like for me, I have, if you're a business owner, you can connect with me to talk over your marketing strategies, or if you want to check out our upcoming webinars or events, there's a link in there. Um, but then just a welcoming, like I welcome you to connect, um, it, or <laughs> welcome any invitation to collaborate. I hope to connect soon. Um, so just letting people know what it is you're looking to get out of LinkedIn so that they kind of have an in of, if they're looking to reach out to you, they know how to do that. Um, another Cool piece that I like, so uh, you can add in different featured content. So if you're mentioned in an article, if you write an article, um, I recently added our webinars from this session or this um, series, so I have featured those. Um, but it just gives people an insight into some of the work that you're doing. Um, and I think making sure that you're keeping this relevant as more content comes out, um, you can make, make note 
to like update it in here as well. Um, let's see if you scroll down. So this will look different for everyone. This is just like your own internal dashboard. So it says private to you. So only you are gonna see this. No one like coming to your page is gonna see this information, um, but you can see like who's viewed your profile. Um, if you have any articles that are already out there that you've published to LinkedIn, you can see how many views they've gotten um, and how many searches um, you've appeared in. I think this is good just as like, you can see how well you're performing. So if these numbers are going up, it's like a good internal gauge for you to be aware of. Um, so if you wanna get more views on your profile, you have like that bar that you can measure against and see like if what you're doing is giving you the results that you're hoping for. Um, you can see any activity. So if I've shared something, commented on anyone else's post, um, it's all just gonna show up in here, but that's only like, only actually, no, actually anyone who comes to our page like would see that as well. Um, and then if you scroll down, so here's where you get into your work history. Um, so you can see when I first started at CWE, I had a totally different title, totally different job, and that's listed down here. And then when I became the digital marketing and program manager, I updated that in LinkedIn to show my new responsibilities and what I'm doing, added in some more of that content. Um, and you can add in different works that you've been doing. Um, and then old stuff. You can add in um, previous work experience, internship opportunities, um, volunteer experience is huge. Um, so making sure you're up, because I feel like these are the things that you don't think of like, it, like it's so relevant. Um, and then if you have any sort of certifications, making sure you're updating these and keeping in mind if they expire, like <laughs> when you need to reapply. Um, education and I think they say after like five years you don't really like of being out of high school you don't need to put your high school information in there because it might not be super relevant um and then this gets down to what Kay was talking about earlier so any sort of skills or endorsements um like I have research on here social media, um, and only your top three. So you can select 20 if you wanted to, um, but I would encourage you to choose just a few that you would really want highlighted on your page. Um, so then when people endorse them, they're gonna stay on this main page that people are gonna see. Um, so for me, it's research, leadership, and social media. Um, and then these are the other ones that I have. Um, I don't have any, actually, do you mind if, Kate, do you mind if I share your um, LinkedIn page? No, not at all. Awesome. Because <laughs> so I was like, one of the great features and one that I admittedly need to use more <laughs> is the recommendations tab. Because I think, especially as a small business owner, um, it's good to see that other people recommend you and to have that right on your profile. They don't have to go digging for it. Um, so you can see Kate's given uh, nine and she's received eight. So it is, it's very reciprocal. Um, and I think when you reach out to folks to ask for a recommendation, offering like I'd be willing to write one is for you as well, um, is a good thing and letting them know what it is you're looking to highlight. So if someone um, has presented with you or something like that and you want them to speak to that attribute, um, asking them. So that's another great feature. Um, you can add in interest. So these are just folks that I follow. You can follow people, companies, organizations. Um, yeah. One other thing. So if we scroll back to the top, I meant to go over this. Um, so you can go, if you hit edit public profile and URL. Um, so LinkedIn gives you just like a generic URL. I think when I first created mine, it was like, linkedin.com slash Samantha Pavir and then like 1,265. Um, it wasn't a cute URL. Um, and I guess my name isn't super common. So I went in and just changed it to Samantha Pavir. So it's more easily searchable. Um, for people who may have more common names, you might need to get a little bit more creative. Um, but just so you know, like where can you adjust it? Um, 
So it would be right in there. And then as far as like privacy settings and like, what do you want to be visible um, or hidden for people who aren't connected to you? It lets you go through where it says edit visibility. So you can click off, maybe you don't want people to have access to your education history or volunteer experiences. You can click off what you're comfortable sharing. For me, I'm kind of like, I have like on LinkedIn, I only post things that I'd be comfortable with people <laughs> seeing and like, I wanna make sure that my profile is getting seen. So I'm like, I'll share everything, <laughs> um, but definitely personal preference too. Um, is there anything else on a personal page? Um, one thing I wanted to go back to, Sam, if you can go into yeah. my profile really quick. Um, we were talking about that headline that's underneath um, your name. So uh, earlier when I gave my introduction, I said that I'm communications manager, right? And that, that means that I wear many hats. So if I just let it be what the default is here on LinkedIn, we just communications manager, like that doesn't really tell people what I really do. So by putting in some details here, you can see what I'm doing, but also what I'm trying to accomplish, right? So I like to speak at events. Um, I'm studying for my MBA. So like you can see a little bit more about what, what I do there. And then um, back to the comment on the photos. So this photo was just snapped of me at an event. This wasn't anything like where I signed up to have this photo taken, um, but I just thought it was a really good photo of me. So I figured I would use it. Um, and this was only taken like seven months ago. So it's pretty relevant and recent. Um, let's see, I'll pause. I'm sure there are questions. So if anyone has any questions or want to like dig deeper into any of those, um, feel free to throw them in the chat. I was talking to a client this morning who owns a B&B &B, and they're on LinkedIn all the time and they are constantly being solicited for different things. Like someone has interest in your skills. Can you explain how that works? So it's, it's B2B. So B2B. Um, yeah, they were contacted actually by a medical center so that when people are coming into town, they potentially would stay at this B&B. &B. So how, does it, how did they find this person's business? Like, what is the mechanism for searching? Hmm. So probably, the, yeah, probably using the search bar if they were looking for certain industries. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, if Sam, if you have some other ones you're gonna give an example of. Let me see. So I don't know if this is what you mean. So you, the search tool in LinkedIn, you can kind of break it down. So if, if for some reason we were looking for a sales manager and we wanted to go to people. So right now we're getting like 28 million. Um, but maybe we want to see if we have any, I don't know. We'll see. Do I have any first connections that are sales managers? <laughs> so I have 144. Um, so you can kind of break it down like that if you wanted to get like more narrow you can go to maybe i think i have a lot of people who work at dell so we'll do apply <laughs> okay so then maybe we wanted it for a specific industry like dell um so that's kind of the process that other people will go through to kind of like narrow it down um so making sure that you're having like those keywords so that you show up in people's searches when they do stuff like this. Um, and you can literally search like keywords for whichever industry you're in. Um, and then making sure that you're including them, but in like a, in a neat way that isn't super cluttered. Um, I don't know if that answers the question. Yeah. And if you owned a business and you were looking for people to provide certain services, you'd use a search bar as well. And then you can narrow it down in that mm -hmm. way. Great. Thanks, I can't uh, pull up the chat. So if there are any more. <laughs> yeah, I see a couple of questions here. Um, what does the number next to your name refer to first, second, and third? Like the connections. Okay. Let's see. 
So first connections are people that you've connected with, either you've sent them a request to connect or they've sent you one and you've accepted, you are now first connections. Second connections are, so say that person that I just connected with is connected to someone, um, right? <laughs> then that yeah. would be like a second connection to me. Um, third is like, you are really branching out and like, I feel like I'm talking in circles. But, uh, <laughs> it's yeah. like the six degrees of separation, right? So yeah. like you might have somebody who knows somebody and then that's a good way to get an introduction. So let's say you wanted to get introduced to them as a potential customer or business partner. You would say like, Hey, Sam, could you connect me to this person? And I see that you're connected on LinkedIn and that would be a second connection. And then she could provide a message to the two of us to connect. Um, third would be, you, you probably don't know them or you might share some same groups, but you, you probably don't know them as directly and it'd be harder to get an introduction. Mm -hmm. um, somebody else asked, can you show us again where the edit visibility buttons are? So I think yeah. you're like in the profile area. So if you're on your profile, um, you would go up to edit public profile and URL click on that and then it'll pop up a new screen and where it says on the right hand side, edit visibility. Um, that's where you'll get prompted of like, do you want your profile to be public and you could have it private and nothing would show up or you can leave that on and then break it down by maybe you're comfortable sharing some stuff, but not others. Um, so that would be right in here. Uh, another question was, can we talk about how to craft your tagline below your name? Any best practices? Mm -hmm. Do best practices. I feel like for me, what's the most important, um, like, when I go to this section on someone else's page, I want to get like exactly what it is that they do. Um, who is it that they're serving? Maybe what's unique about what they offer as opposed to someone else. Um, and I feel like, and this is maybe just like a personal thing, but like when you can hear someone's tone and you get a feel for like who you're interacting with, um, cause you have your resume and, it's very formal, but I think LinkedIn, you can show your personality um, and social media, it's supposed to be engaging. And I think this is a place where you can really do that. Um, I don't know if you have any like best practices in here. Yeah, I think it's just a great place to elaborate a little bit more about yourself and, um, you know, definitely let people know what you're looking to connect for. Some people really want to connect for volunteer opportunities. Sometimes they want to connect because they're, um, working in education and they're doing research. Um, so there could be a variety of reasons, um, you know, and, and making it nice and, and readable is important too. Uh, you don't want to just copy and paste your resume into, into the summary or to the, to the headline here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so how, how should we hold to our, Oh, upload. I'm going to guess this is how should, how should we upload maybe our CV to LinkedIn? Um, I would say LinkedIn is, is pretty much your, it's a more robust CV or resume um, out mm -hmm. there. It allows you to add in more projects and so forth. So I don't think you need to upload it. Um, if you're using LinkedIn for job applications, you can upload it to apply directly through LinkedIn. Um, but I don't think you need to add it directly to your profile if you're filling out all those sections. But I don't know if there's any other insights you have, Samantha. I kind of feel the same way. And I think like the whole thing about like, you don't want to duplicate your resume, like regurgitated into LinkedIn. Cause I think they are two separate entities and I think a CV works one way and you can have it kind of laid out differently here. Um, so yeah. We have a question about the difference between the regular free LinkedIn account and the premium membership. Is it worth it? And does it reflect greater professionalism to actually pay for the premium version? What are your thoughts? I am a huge advocate of the benefit of social media is that you don't need to pay. And like, I think especially for small business owners, like 
I don't know. I don't think you need to be funneling money into programs that are just as good for the free versions. Um, I don't know, maybe if you were doing it for sales or something, but even then, um, cause I think you get like, you're able to send more messages, um, with the paid version, you're able to see who's viewed your profile. Um, but even with that, sometimes like if they also have a paid version, they can hide that. Like, I don't know. So I don't know. I I'm not <laughs> on the side of like, you should pay for LinkedIn. Um, so I don't know if you have any other, um, I mean, so there's different types of paid LinkedIn, right? If you're doing a job search, you can pay to have premium LinkedIn to get more insights into your job search. Um, it just gives you some more information on uh, people who are looking at your profile or companies out there that might be more of a match. Um, as, as far as using it for your business or sales, I think it's a, it is a good tool to get into like LinkedIn sales navigator or the premium but I don't recommend people get into that until they're really leveraging the free version first. You need to really master using the free version before you jump into those tools um, to really make it worth your while because you don't want to start paying for something if you're not going to use it. So use the free tool and the free tool already is incredibly powerful and it doesn't really, unlike um, like Facebook, for example, it doesn't really, prioritize free versus paid users in terms of searches and so forth too. So I wouldn't be too concerned over that affecting uh, you making the right connections or making sales or gaining business. So to your point about, you know, the time and really mastering LinkedIn, that's what someone said a few chats ago is, you know, how much time should you dive into this with? And if you're not prepared to really follow up, should you go on LinkedIn? Is, is there a benefit to being there, even though your profile may be somewhat stale? What are your thoughts? Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> I, I know what you mean. Cause I feel like so many people and like, we've had so many clients who walk in and they're on Facebook, they're on LinkedIn, they're on Twitter, they're on Instagram, but none of it is maintained or managed, uh, like efficiently or effectively. And maybe they haven't even touched their LinkedIn in months, but if that's how someone is first finding you is on LinkedIn and you haven't posted in months, it's like, are they still in business? And that is not something you ever want anyone to question. Like, so either, and I always tell people like start off with one. And then once you're comfortable and like you have a set schedule, then consider adding another one. Um, but I think if you're going into it being like, I don't know if I have the time to manage this, like maybe right now is not the time for you to like add another thing to your list. Um, but I would just stick with one and like do it well and have a consistent schedule. Um, yeah. yeah. And if somebody had a limited amount of time, what would you recommend they do? They would go on LinkedIn and what, what would they do on LinkedIn mm. with the time that they've allocated to build their familiarity? Mm -hmm. um, I think, oh. Sorry, my dog just came in and scared me. <laughs> um, for me, and like LinkedIn is one of the platforms where you don't need to be posting on it every single day. Um, like I think they said, ideally you should be posting at least at least once a week, which I think is manageable for a lot of people. Um, so I think if you can think about what would be the most useful piece of information to share with your network and make that a point of like, I'm going to share one thing each week and maybe have a goal, especially if you're new to LinkedIn. For me, when I started my page, I was like, I'm going to go through and see, um, like on the right hand side, you can see who might be, um, in your realm of things. And maybe you want to connect with them. Um, but going through and being like, I'll connect with like five people this week. Um, and I think there are little things that you can do to kind of build up your profile um, that isn't necessarily super time consuming. It's just like, it's a matter of like sitting it down and doing it. Um, that would be my advice. Yeah, I would definitely recommend respond to messages. Um, try to put out a thoughtful post once a week. 
Um, but the other thing is to look in your look in your LinkedIn feed and see what other people are posting and don't force the conversation, right? Don't be like, I need to post three things. I need to reply to three people today. But, you know, mm -hmm. sit there and see if there's something that a conversation you want to join in on and comment on, share some insights, maybe share a link to something, share an article, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. um, and that just helps you to cultivate those conversations and keep that top of mind awareness with potential customers. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and just shows shows also that you're, you're just want to be in that conversation. Um, most people I recommend if you're going to spend some time on LinkedIn at, at minimum spend about an hour a week and that could be five minutes every single day. Um, it doesn't need to be, you know, I'm going to sit down Monday at eight o'clock from 8am to 9am and work on my LinkedIn. You can do it a couple minutes every day. Um, but you should dedicate about an hour a week to it if you're going to use this as one of your tools. Mm -hmm. And a question came up about how do you respond to people who request to connect with you, even if they like write a message, but you have really no idea who they are. What are best practices in that situation? I feel like for me, I appreciate when people do put a message of like, here's why I'm reaching out to you. Cause I think sometimes if you get a connection request and like, they seem super not relevant to your industry. And you're like, I don't even know why, but at least if they put a blurb of like, here's why I'm reaching out. I'm like doing this event. Maybe you'd be interested, whatever. Um, so it's not, and I'm open to connections like outside of my own industry. Um, but I also understand people who are like, I want to keep my circle small and like, and that's total personal preference too. Um, but yeah, I guess that's my own. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I think it's your own preference. If you want to make those big connections and you're open to that, then that's fine. But yeah, some people are very personal about it. Like I vet a lot of people that are going to connect with me because I'm like, why are they connecting with me? Mm -hmm. What is the reason? And I look at their profile and I kind of just try to figure it out or if we have common connections. Um, but also like it's sometimes a matter of safety too. Do you really want to connect with somebody that you don't know, um, especially if they send you kind of a cold message? Um, which is why those warm messages are always nice to send of like, Hey, I want to connect with you for the purpose of, mm -hmm. and then they share that with you. Or I realize we have mutual con connections. Maybe we could have a good conversation. Um, I think that's really important. Thanks. All right. So I think if we're good with the personal LinkedIn page, I'll go ahead and stop sharing. Okay. And I can share my screen for the business side. Here. There we go. So you should be able to see my screen here. Um, so this is the Avidia Bank um, LinkedIn page. Um, I'll go through some of the things that uh, I wanted to highlight with you all here, but again, please feel free to ask any questions. So we talked a little bit about the personal page, right? So the personal page, think of it as your personal professional profile that's out there. Um, this would be your business page. So uh, I manage this page from the back end, um, so I make sure that we're posting things, we're active on here, it's all up to date. So a couple things when you first get your page started. Um, one of the things that you want to work on first is, again, a cover photo. So this is a really great branding opportunity. Um, if you have a message you want to put out here, you can put it in here. Um, because we're a bank, we're, we use this for some of our disclosures. Um, and then we use our logo here um, for our profile photo. Now, some people are um, some people are their own business, right? So if you create a business page because you're a freelancer or because you run your own business, this might be where you also put your own headshot photo, um, but you also might have a logo for your business. So this is a really great place to use it. Um, and I just saw a question pop in for, is, is there a cost for creating a business page? Um, so no, uh, business page is free. Uh, there are some premium features, um, which I'll get into in a little bit, but um, you can create this for free um, and it's relatively easy to do. Um, much like your own profile for your personal profile, you can put in some information here like a, a tagline or a headline. Um, so we have our tagline in here. Um, you can see where the location is and you want to put that in there as well. And just to get to all this information, you're just going to click edit page. Um, and then you can put in up to 2000 characters of a description. Um, your URL. Um, and if you don't have a website yet, that's okay. You can check this box here. 
Um, you can select your banking, your industry. So I have banking here, but if you, obviously many of you will probably have a different industry. Company size. So this is nice and searchable for people who are looking for various company sizes on, on LinkedIn. Um, phone number, if you'd like, the year that you were founded. And then this is really important. So much like a lot of the skills that you might have on your personal profile, um, you wanna include what your specialties are for your business. Um, because again, just because this is a bank, for example, we do a variety of other things. So we're able to put in some keywords here. And then we can also add in locations. So I can add in all of our different locations in here. Um, this just helps with people knowing exactly where to find you. And, and that search bar is really helpful. Um, I saw a question earlier about hashtags. I'm gonna get into that for a, in a minute, but one of the hashtags that you might wanna put in is things that you wanna follow and participate in from your business side. Um, so we have your community bank, banking, uh, financial technologies. Those are some of the hashtags that we, that we monitor. And you can have up to three. And then the next thing that I wanted to get into is the link for your page. So what you might see here is this kind of garbled mess of a link. Um, you don't want to be sharing out this link to your followers because this is your admin link. So in order to get to your link, there's a couple different things you can do. The first is go to view as member. And then if I go to this, you can see LinkedIn slash company slash video dash bank, right? And this is just the view as member here, but if you eliminate that, then you can see what it looks like. And you'll still see this admin view here. Your, your public users will not see that, but that's just because you're managing this page. Now, another thing uh, that you might wanna do is edit your um, URL, so to make it easier. Um, so you don't have that number that's there or something that's really complicated and long, so you can actually go into admin tools edit public URL, and then you can change it here. And this happens a lot of times too. Uh, if, if companies go through a merger or acquisition, or you change the name of your company, or you just don't like the way it looks, you can go in here and edit that URL if you'd like. And we also got a question, so what should you put in location if your business is online? That's a great question. Um, I would put a region or, um, it, wherever you're headquartered out of, even if you're online. So, you know, let's say you're headquartered out of Boston, Massachusetts, putting in Boston, Mass is fine. Um, it's good to just verify where, where the business actually is. Um, but if you don't have a physical, like, retail location, that's totally fine. Definitely make sure your, your website link is on there, though. So... Um, let's talk really quickly about how to post, what to post, and how often, because we talked a little bit about um, how you want to monitor your LinkedIn page. So the first thing is um, how you post to your page. So right here, um, I'm on my business page here, and I can click start a post. Um, and there's a lot of different things that you can do. So you can post to anyone. You can select the targeted audience, which you sometimes have to pay for. So I would just start with anyone um, and then you can you know adding a new post here check out our new checking accounts whatever it is right and then um, you can add in a, an image a video if you have let's say a document or a pdf you want to share a slideshow any of those things you can upload that right to here um, and then we were talking about hashtags earlier so LinkedIn will suggest hashtags for you based upon your previous engagements on the platform, but you can add in other ones. You're not limited to just these, um, but I recommend industry specific. They do perform really well because then people can find you that way. So I definitely think um, they're useful on LinkedIn. They used to not be, um, but they're definitely more useful now. So maybe you put in finance, uh, banking, community bank, um, budget, whatever it is, right? You might want to put in some different things. And then you'll see some suggestions down here. So you might see some other ones that might be helpful for you to add in and consider in the future. But you don't need to go crazy. Um, I usually add in like five hashtags uh, when I do a post. Um, another thing that's a really great tool 
for posting is polls. So this is a great way to engage your audience. And let's say you want to um, write a blog post and you're curious about, um, you know, let's say, um, how does your back to school shopping look like? Or what does it look like this year, right? And then you can put in options and then you can tell it for how long you want the poll to be out there. Um, once you post it, it'll be out there. People can vote, they can share it. Um, and then you'll get the information back from those votes. So that might be a really great way to write a blog post later on. Um, you might be able to use this and reshare it later um, just because it's interesting and people can't resist when they see a poll um, where they can just go in and click their button and give their own opinions. This is a great way um, to post that and get some opinions on things. Or maybe you're launching a new product. This is a great way to also um, get a little focus group going and see how people feel about it. So some other topics that are worth posting on LinkedIn, uh, specifically for your business page, are things about your employees, um, company updates, corporate culture. So this was one, um, one of our employees here, she was featured in an article. You can see the, the hashtags that I put in here. Um, I put in a link to the article and I congratulated her on LinkedIn. Um, so that's a great way to um, promote things that are happening, uh, your employees. And I'll tell you that if you have a picture in here, particularly of a person, and it's a real picture, not a stock photo, um, it will always perform better than anything else that you put out there. So if it's particularly something about your employees, your community, um, yourself, um, you know, I know we all hate having our photos taken, but uh, it does always perform way better than anything else you ever post. So I mentioned corporate culture. Um, here's one for a jeans day that we had recently. Um, you might have some things on industry conversations. So maybe somebody was featured on a podcast and they had a conversation. Maybe you want people to comment on it and engage with that. So that's another thing that you can post out there as well. Um, this is another one of just like corporate culture sharing that we have a new employee again, putting those employee pictures out there. Um, and then just updates, right? We're closed for Labor Day. Um, this is a great place to just share that as well. Now, what's really important here, and I actually left this open for a reason, um, is when people comment on things that you do or comment on your, on your page, don't just ignore that. So when someone comments on your page or on a post, make sure that you're uh, responding. So I left this open here for this webinar today. So Margaret comment, commented um, saying that she appreciates, appreciates the podcast episode um, and the topics that were covered. So make sure you're just responding. Again, social media is about being social. It goes a really long way and particularly when you're responding from a brand. So I'm gonna say, hi, Margaret. Thanks for tuning in. Glad you enjoyed it, right? Very simple, but she's gonna remember that now that I posted that. Um, and if you work for a larger company, you might wanna attribute who it's coming from. So sometimes you'll put your name. Um, if not, you can just leave it blank um, if you'd like. And then I respond to that and she'll get a notification that I responded. So it's pretty nice. Um, it's uh, just helpful for people to keep that conversation going and keep that top of mind awareness. Now, another trick that I wanted to show you here was um, if you have a company that you work at where you manage this page and you have some really big news you want to share. Now, let's say it's like really, really exciting and you want to get it out to all of your employees and you want them to share it on LinkedIn too. So here's a little trick for you. They have this new feature uh, where you can click notify employees. So anybody who lists that they work at Avidia Bank, I can click notify. And what will happen is the 204 employees who have their profile linked to a video bank will be notified that this post is available. Um, so maybe you have a really big update you wanna share, you have something really exciting. Um, this is a great way to get some news out there really quickly to your employees. This is something that I see a lot of global companies use as well. Um, but this is great because um, they'll get that notification uh, that something happened and then they'll either share it or comment or um, just be aware. So this is a really nice tool to use too.
It's really great for brand advocacy. All right, and now I'm gonna move over to um, some other tools on here for posts. So we talked about posting polls, we talked about articles, various newsfeed posts. But the other nice thing, particularly in this day and age with the pandemic, is to leverage online events. So you can actually go in and click create an event. Um, so this is just like Facebook events, but LinkedIn. Um, I haven't seen many people starting to use this yet. So um, this is one of those tools where if you are an early adopter, you might get a lot of attendance. Um, so you can put your event in here. Uh, let me just say like home buyer seminar. And I'm gonna put a broadcast link. I can set the date and the time. Um, if I'm gonna have tickets purchased, right? I could put like an Eventbrite link in there or a constant contact link. I could make it private. Maybe I only wanna put it on for a certain group of people or I can make it public. Um, and then I would create the event. So this is a really great way if you're doing webinars, if you're doing a podcast, educational series, you can leverage this and you can also edit the event to have maybe a different logo or a different cover photo. So it stands out from your typical, um, your typical posts. But this is a really nice tool, particularly right now. I'm just gonna discard this because they would get really mad if I posted a home buyer seminar. Any questions so far? So we did get a couple that literally just came in, so oh, I'll read cool. them. Um, when you build a business page, is there a difference, is there a different way to begin it? Is it different than where you start a personal page? Um, she said, it's been years since I created my personal page and I do not do much with it, but I did not know that I could create a business page too. Oh, um, so it is different because you'll use your personal page to start your business page. So what you have to do is you can see I'm logged in here. That's me. Um, I'm logged into my profile. So if I want to create a page, um, I'm going to go right into here and I'm going to create my page. Um, oops. So you can create your pages right in here. Um, you can see the company pages you'll find right within there. So when you're logged in, you can go right to your company page. Um, you can manage it right from there. You can add in new pages. Um, and let's say you have a couple of different businesses or you have a subsidiary business or something that's um, a smaller piece of your business. Um, you might wanna create a showcase page. So we have an HSA business we actually have a showcase page where we're able to showcase that because that's a very specific type of business. But you'll do that all right through your personal page here. Um, and it's very easy to set up right through here. Awesome. And then this one says, if I have both a, a primary profession that I'm job hunting for and a side hustle, which is multi-level marketing to promote, how would you suggest going about that? Do you want me to read it again? I feel like I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, yeah. Um, so it says, if I have both a primary profession that I'm job hunting for and a side hustle to, uh, which, which is multi-level marketing <laughs> to promote, how would you suggest going about that? So it sounds like she has like a nine to five. And then she also has this other side hustle on the side. Yeah, I would say, um, you know, I, so I would say manage that mostly from your personal page versus a business page. Um, if your side hustle is really growing, uh, you could build out a LinkedIn page, um, a business page, but I would say start with your personal page and promoting that first um, and share, you know, posts and updates. I don't know if you have any other thoughts there yourself. Yeah, no, I was going to say the same thing. I think especially for like, job hunting purposes, that's going to be your personal LinkedIn page. Mm -hmm. And then if you get to the point where you're like, all right, like this side hustle is turning into like more of a full-time thing then considering doing a business page. But I think especially in the beginning, you don't necessarily need to have a business page. You can promote it on your personal one as well. So I guess long winded way of saying I agree. <laughs> Um, and then we got another question. So when creating an event, do you hold the event over LinkedIn or is it a link to a Zoom event? How does that work? Great question. Um, so you would actually, let me go back over to the page here. 
Um, so when you create the event here, you would actually put your, your link in here. So you can do it for LinkedIn Live, which would just be on LinkedIn itself, or you can put in a Zoom link as well, or you can do um, whatever you use, maybe go to webinar or any of um, Vidyard, any of those you can use um, and just link into here, or you can just do LinkedIn Live. So you have a variety of options. Perfect. And then one more question. No problem. <laughs> so how do you connect your personal page to your company page? Um, great idea. So if you haven't, um, if you are not managing your page, so I'm going to start there with that example. Um, what you can do is when you add your experience here in your position, um, I'm just going to use, uh, just say uh, marketing consultant. Um, then what you're going to do is you're actually just going to link your page right here. So when you add an experience, you're going to put start typing in the company. And as you start to type it in, you'll see it come up. There'll be a bunch of different ones that are available here and you just select that. And then it will be linked directly to that company. So if I get out of this really quickly, you can see that if, I, if someone were to visit my profile and they clicked on this, it would bring them directly to the Avidia Bank business page. So that's one way if you're not managing that page. Um, if you want to manage a page or build one, you're just gonna go in here and actually create your page down here. Um, I don't have the, the feature just because I'm already managing pages, um, but if you wanted to, you just create pages down here. Awesome. And then another one came in. So <clears throat> are there any online resources that you use, like say a blog that focus on how to leverage LinkedIn to build your brand, personal or business? Um, I mean, LinkedIn has a lot of really great resources right within them. So they have a lot of great user guides on how to leverage their different tools and build your business through it. There's also, um, if you're using this for marketing purposes, um, they have what's called their sophisticated marketers guide. So I would definitely check that out. And then I have a couple other resources for you as well that I'll send some links to in the chat um, before the end of the session. Perfect. And then I think, let me double check. Um... Somebody had asked if it was possible to get notifications on your email that you have messages in LinkedIn. Yeah, um, so if you go into your settings, um, you can't, you used to be able to respond via email, but you can't do it anymore, which is annoying. So you have to log in to respond, um, but you can get notifications on if somebody wants to connect with you, if somebody wants to send you a message, if um, let's say there's a job that's open that would fit your job description that you're looking for. Um, so you can set all those preferences here. Um, just going to where that is here. I think it's our communications. Yeah, so you can select here um, that you want an email. Um, and then you can select how and what you get. So you can go through and like, I want to be notified of every conversation. I want to be notified of their enterprise products. Um, maybe some of their learning things, their news. So you can um, get notifications and opt in for whatever you want or you don't want because all of our inboxes, I'm sure, are overflowing. Um, so you can be really selective in what you want here, um, which is really helpful. Perfect. I don't think I see any more questions. All right. So I think the last thing that I wanted to show everyone here was um, just going through some analytics and what you want to look for on your business page. So um, earlier when we talked on the personal page, um, you saw what you know people visiting your page would look like or um, people searching you, that kind of thing, which is really um, important. So when you're looking at your business page, you get a quick overview really quick here of analytics. This is the last 30 days. Um, you know, you obviously want to see visitors coming to your page. You want to see an increase in followers. Um, impressions are how many people are seeing your posts or seeing your page. So um, that is valuable for just general brand awareness that people are seeing you. Um, button clicks means that they're 
clicking into some of the buttons to connect with us, um, to follow our page, to go to our website, any of those types of clicks. But if you go into here, you can actually view all your analytics here. So if we go into visitors, maybe you want to see who's visiting your page. Um, you can see my page views are down this week. Um, it's a little all over the place, but usually I just take this as like average and what I want to look for on a monthly basis. Um, this is really important here too. So looking at the visitor demographics. So let's say you're posting some content to your LinkedIn page and it's the top people that are looking at your content are nowhere near your industry, right? It's totally opposite. And if that's the case, your content is somehow missing the mark. So take a look back and see maybe why. But for here, I'm posting stuff about finance and my primary visitors are finance. That's what I want, right? I want people who have that interest, who are visiting us and sharing that news and interested in that topic. So that's important to look at. And then in terms of updates, you can see um, your top performing content. So I can see at all my content here, um, what's getting the most amount of clicks? What's getting the most amount of impressions? Um, this is your click-through rate. So if you're pretty high on this, you're doing pretty well. Um, most average industries will see about a two to 4% click-through rate depending on the article. So 8% is really good. Um, and that just means the amount of people who viewed your, who viewed your post actually clicked. So that's really good. Um, but this is a great way to see like, okay, like I said, our, our uh, content that always performs really well is the content that features employees, right? But if I have content that doesn't feature anybody or doesn't have a picture, um, so let me show you this one. This was just for closed for Labor Day. Um, this one didn't get any clicks or responses. So obviously it's just an animation. It's not really showing anything exciting. So who goes on LinkedIn, right? If you're a small business, because that's, that's the demographic of who we serve, who of their customers are going to be on LinkedIn versus Facebook or Twitter or Pinterest? Age-wise and so forth. Um, I mean, most LinkedIn users are um, professionals. They're professionals or business owners. Um, Age-wise, it's a broad range. Um, I've seen a lot of colleges now encouraging college students to start their LinkedIn as soon as they start school. And I think that's some really great advice um, because then they can start their portfolio and building that out and building some of those connections, which are super valuable. Um, but I would say that it's just, it runs a gamut for age ranges. Um, but yeah, definitely business owners and um, you know, people who, a lot of salespeople are on LinkedIn as well. Um, I get like a sales connection usually every other day, which is great. Uh, recruiters, um, and then like I said, business owners. So if you could put yourself in the, in the shoes of let's say a restaurant, what type of information would you post on LinkedIn versus Twitter versus Instagram versus Facebook? Like just, just, how would you handle that? God, if you have, if you have insight. <laughs> sure. Um, trying to think. So if I was a restaurant, I feel like typically any small business, if you're hiring, like the people who are following you on social media, they already know who you are, what you're about. So they could be potential great employees. So anytime you're hiring, LinkedIn is a great place to post that. Um, but I'm even thinking like a lot of restaurants who do um, like after hour networking events, like using that event feature and posting something like that. Um, that's the exact target market right there. Um, so that's like some of the things that directly come to mind or any company wide updates. Like if you're building a second location, like you want to promote that to people too. Um, yeah. I would say also um, business partner. So if you have like um, a business partner that you work with or a, a vendor that you work with, um, maybe you collaborate on something on LinkedIn. So mm -hmm. for a restaurant, maybe you work with, um, I think one of the big uh, payment processors out there is Toast. So maybe you're participating in a case study with Toast because you're a client. Um, that's a great place to share that, right? It's not really relevant to your, to your, 
restaurant goers who are coming out to eat, um, but maybe because people in the industry who are restaurant owners um, want to see what vendors are out there and see what they're offering. So that's a really great place to start too. Great. And then let's see, we did get a couple more questions that came in. Um, and this one came from Paula and I'm not entirely sure what the question means, but if anyone does, or maybe Paula, if you could expand on it. Uh, so it says, can you talk about self-employed retail? And I don't know if that is like, yeah, I think I just need more information, but I know. Yeah. Um, I think that was the only other one. And then from Lynn, um, how about getting notified by LinkedIn directly? Is that possible or do you need the app? Um, so your notifications, I think, I think if the question's going to the right place. So if you're on your desktop, like I am here, you can see I, ha I already have some notifications in my corner here. Um, so you can get notified um, just through your desktop and you can also allow them to do push notifications to your browser. Um, that's also in that settings area. So I'll go to settings and privacy um, and under communications. Um, you can see pop-ups on your device. You can have your email and then on LinkedIn. So this is, this is where you would get those notifications. Um, and you can have them pop up with all these different things or um, change the frequency. And there's like thousands of options. Um, so, but you can change any of those in here and get notified right through um, the LinkedIn platform here like I am right here. Hopefully that answers that question. I think so. Awesome. And I think that was the last question I saw. Um, okay. So Paula said the business can have its own page, but as an owner, how can I have a page that is relevant to people? Uh, and Paula, Paula, would you like to come on and ask your question? Because maybe if you can elaborate, that would be great for everybody. So if you would just like to unmute yourself. Hi. Hello. Okay, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Um, so a lot of business, I, I own a retail dance store and a lot of my vendors do have um, their own uh, LinkedIn pages. And a few stores across the country have their own, their stores as a LinkedIn page. So maybe people can connect that way. Um, but personally, I find it, um, what can I say about myself? I'm at a certain age. Yes, I went to an Ivy League college. I, but that was decades ago. And yes, um, there's a lot of things. Personally, am I putting out a personal page about myself or am I putting out a personal page that's relevant to my business? That's the part I don't know what I should do, which is what's held me up. Hmm. Also, a lot of people say that when you're in retail, LinkedIn pages don't work so much, but in a way, I, I can see that it can, but then in a way, I can't see it versus Facebook, Instagram, even Twitter doesn't quite work as well. But I just think LinkedIn is so professional. It's just such a different kind of tool to use. And, um, that's, that's all I, I have. That's the question, I guess. Um, so do you mean like when, like when would you post on your own personal page versus when would you post uh, like on your company page? Is that kind of the question? Right. Well, the company's page, I saw the bank because that was interesting. And yes, and it, it just looks cleaner and sharper. And, um, and we could mention my personal page, I, I do I do write a lot of articles, so I could put that there, but I don't know if people would know who I am. On the business page, I could put the articles there and maybe connect and cross with other businesses and things like that, but it's the kind of business, it's the kind of operations that a lot of people might not use LinkedIn, but a lot of professional people might, like some people do ballroom dancing and they might be looking, I don't know why they would look at LinkedIn, but you never know. I don't know where people are going today looking for whatever it is. 
I understand what LinkedIn does. It connects you with people in business for jobs or this or that. But um, I just I just don't know how it relates to retail. That's the whole point. That's, I guess, the question. Mm -hmm. yeah, a hard think, one. Yeah, I think retail is a challenge. And I think you you know, you've done a lot of thinking on what platforms will serve you best. Um, you know, maybe Twitter is not the right platform. Um, maybe LinkedIn might not serve you as well as you think, or, or maybe, you know, you're using your personal profile or, or using those articles. I think you're down the right path of um, what kind of content to share um, to get the, the most out of it. But sometimes it's not always the best platform. So um, definitely take a look and see how it's performing because you don't want to be dedicating time to a platform that's not gonna serve you well, um, whereas maybe you're seeing better performance out of Facebook. Um, so maybe whatever hour you might dedicate to LinkedIn, maybe dedicate only a half hour to LinkedIn and, and, a, and the rest of that hour to, uh, to Facebook if that's more beneficial. That would be my thoughts. Thank you. I, I think the, uh, definitely the, the business page, I'm gonna work on that one the most. And you know, connect with the personal one so people might I, I don't know that people need to know much about me, but where did I come from? You know, there's some things that are important that might cross over. As time moves on, I think right now the kind of people we have, you're right, Facebook and Instagram is really my top things. But I think preparing for the future, I think LinkedIn is going to become far more important as time goes by. That's why I really asked that question. Thank you, ladies. Awesome. No and along those same lines, if someone is years out of school and they really are now resting on their professional credentials of what they've done, is there any way to rework their experience or to somehow not skip the educational part, but really just have it be more based on the life experience that's relevant to why you should read what they've written? Or is it just formatted in a way that you just have to fill it out and that's, you have to fill it out? It depends on your goal. Um, funny enough, I went to school for criminal justice and I got my master's in criminal justice and now I'm in school for my MBA. So a um, little bit all over the place, but I still have it on there because it is an accomplishment and it is something that I, I went to formal schooling for. Um, but I'll go to my profile really quick. Um, but here you can see like in my actual about section, you know, I really make it clear what I work on. Um, this is what people are going to see first. Um, but I also want to showcase, let's say to a potential employer that I do have formal education too, um, because sometimes that, that is required, right? That you have a bachelor's degree or a master's right. or what have you. So um, while it's not in marketing or communications or business, but it's still relevant. Um, but I think it's something that's really important to showcase um, just that continuation of it. Mm -hmm. all right i don't have anything further for the um linkedin for business i don't know if we want to jump into groups or take more questions i know i feel like if people want to jump into groups but i feel like so many people have questions and i'm like maybe we bit off a little bit more than yeah. we can do <laughs> um so maybe we'll pause if people have, which I'm sure people have more questions, um, feel free to either unmute yourself or if you want to throw it right in the chat, or if you are like, wait, I really wanted to get into groups, like put that in there too. <laughs> but I acknowledge we only have 10 minutes left. So, okay. So we got one for groups. So maybe I'll just go ahead and share my screen and we'll get to what we can get to. Cool. All right. So let's see. So another great tool that I use all the time um, and follow a bunch of different groups. So this one is social media for nonprofit organizations. Um, this one you can see has over 100,000 members. So it's a very active, very large group. Um, and then you can search for these um, and then you'll get a brief description. Um, let's see. Um, most groups you do need to make sure if they have any like 
please don't, a lot of them is like, don't post any sales pitches in here. Like that's not what this is for. They're very much for resource sharing. Um, if you have like a relevant article that you're like, oh, people who are into social media for nonprofits would be interested in this, you could share it here. Um, but I think this is great for community building. And I think for me, because we're such a small marketing department it, with CWE, having groups like this that are out there that I can get information from and best practices and stay up to date on is really nice. Um, one, so within CWE, we have our own LinkedIn group. So it's just called Friends of Center for Women in Enterprise. So we promote this to previous clients. So if they've gone through our business planning class, if um, they're writing their business plan with us or um, do anything like that, we'll tell them about it so they can join. And mostly it's just me promoting a bunch of stuff. Uh, so we're working on that, but a great example. Um, so we had this one woman who started this, um, organization and was reaching out about potential people to speak with her group. Um, and then people within this group can kind of connect. So if they have questions and I think to be in a community where it's other people who are going through the same thing. So small business owners specifically within new England, um, this is a great tool. Um, and to keep people engaged with us about what's going on. And if they have any questions, this is in this one, we have 648 people. Um, so this is previous clients, uh, CWE staff, different uh, organization like supporters. Um, so that's one of my <laughs> favorite things. Um, I don't know if you have any insights on groups or best practices. Yeah, I think it's a great place to engage in conversations. And um, there are a lot of times where, and I think you just showed an example of this, where somebody's looking for um, looking for something, right? Looking for resources. Um, mm -hmm. I manage a couple of different groups as well that um, people will post and say like, hey, I'm looking for a freelance web designer. Does anybody know anyone, right? So if you're in those groups or conversations and you happen to be a freelance web designer, um, that's really great. And another thing that you could do is, um, refer somebody. So maybe you know somebody who is that freelance web designer and you can refer that business, um, which is really helpful. And then just getting some insights too. Like um, a lot of these groups are industry based. So maybe you're struggling with something in the industry and you're like, I just don't understand how this works. Or we got a new like compliance regulation. What do I do? Somebody help. Um, those conversations can happen, which is really nice um, just to be able to turn to, to these groups for some awesome resources. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I guess that didn't take as long as I thought it was going to. Um, but if anyone, I for some reason, whenever I'm sharing my screen, I can't pull up the chat and I saw one come in, but I can't read it. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, it says, um, Alexandra loves your presentation and has a, just a few questions. Her organization uses Facebook to let employees know about changes, newsletters, new services, et cetera. Do you think that notifying employees via LinkedIn is better than doing it through Facebook? Are there benefits of either one? Do you, I guess they're using it yeah. as an internal communication. They're using mm -hmm. Facebook. And the question is, would LinkedIn be a better option? And can you give any tips to help the organization find new business and education because at, uh, LinkedIn is a good B2B platform. Um, I would say if you're using Facebook for internal communications, like I, I imagine it's through some sort of Facebook group uh, or messaging, um, I would keep with it on Facebook because the notify employees is a public post. So let's say you're changing your benefits um, or something like that. You probably don't want to publish that publicly on LinkedIn. So I would stick with Facebook for that. Notify employees of really like more of that. Hey, we have some really big news and we'd really like you to help share it um, and, and share it onto your own networks and profiles versus an internal communication. Um, let me look at the education one really quick. Um, I think education, one of the things that you could look at is definitely looking at the groups, um, like Sam was just showing there, like you could look at different 
groups that are out there that are that are targeted for um, what area of education you're looking in and then looking at um, some of the different interests that are out there from people or some of the key stakeholders um, that work in that educational area so whether it's um, you're looking at you know higher ed or you're looking at um, various uh, specific See, it looks like learning a new language or improving English. Um, so you might be able to research, um, you know, English as a second language, that kind of thing, um, and research that and find find people that you could either partner with or have those interests. Now, if you have any other insights to share on that one. I don't think so. <laughs> and we have just about five minutes left. So to wrap it up, we, we thank you so much for both being with us today. Any final thoughts about how to dive into LinkedIn and have it become part of your marketing strategy? Yeah, I feel like for me, and this is kind of with any social media, is like, don't get overwhelmed, because <laughs> I think it's so easy to, and I know we went through a lot, and I'm sure it was a little bit overwhelming, um, but just take it one step at a time, and it's not that you have to create this perfect page in one day, like you can build on it. And I think LinkedIn, that's what it's intended to do is it's supposed to be this living document that grows as you grow in your career. Um, so just start small, make a little bit of time. Like if it's one hour a day that you're like, this is feasible, or sorry, one hour a week, that would be a lot. <laughs> um, but just create that schedule and kind of commit to it. Um, I think that is the biggest thing. Um, that's my takeaway. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, I would say the same. Don't, don't get overwhelmed by it. Take on one thing at a time. You know, start by building out your personal profile first. Once you feel like you're comfortable with that, go into your business profile. When you're more comfortable with that, then you can look at leveraging things like groups, um, paid advertising, whatever works best for your business. And don't feel like you have to do it all either. We talked a little bit earlier about what might be a better fit. If you find that Facebook is really like the bread and butter and is serving you really well, then dedicate more time to that. You don't have to be on LinkedIn just because everybody says you have to be. Um, so I definitely recommend just like taking things easy, but also like using what's best for you and, and something that you're going to use as a tool. You don't want to publish a LinkedIn page and then neglect it. And then it looks really bad later on and, and you can lose business because of that. Great. So start small and be consistent and find what works for you. And, and you have to like it, right? Some people mm -hmm. definitely like certain platforms more than others. And that's what you were saying, Sam, last week in one of your presentations that if you found something that you like, do more of what you like because you'll mm -hmm. it'll just be easier for you wonderful okay and you posted some um in the chat as well mm -hmm. what did you post some some resources caitlin um yep so this was just um i mentioned earlier the sophisticated marketers guide um to linkedin there's all kinds of guides in here there's a lot of industry research so if you're in a specific industry you can find um, some information in here and it's really just some quick and easy guides on getting yourself started um, and some of them do get really in depth too. So um, there's a whole variety of resources in here. I definitely recommend you check them out and they're free. Great, okay. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.